Over the years, there has been many criticism and debates around DISC personality assessment, whether it is credible enough to assess an individual's personality in an organizational setting or its pseudoscience. And we feel it is essential to be aware of its flaws than trusting it completely. So today, in this eye-opening video, we are diving deep into the murky waters of DISC assessment, exposing the flaws and revealing why relying on DISC is a shaky foundation for understanding people. Stay with us until the end of this video, hear our opinions and make a judgment for yourself about whether DISC is a true personality assessment model or cleverly packaged pseudoscience. But before we jump into conclusions, let us give you a background about DISC. The DISC personality assessment is a popular behavioral profiling tool designed to measure and categorize human behavior. It was first introduced by psychologist William Moulton Marston in the 1920s. DISC development began in the early 1900s when Army asked psychologist William Marston to investigate why different soldiers who received the same same training behaved differently. He published a report called Emotions of Normal People, which was the inception of the DISC theory. It suggests that individuals exhibit predictable patterns of behavior. After that, the DISC grew in popularity and became another chapter in misused pseudoscience. Vendors and users alike tested everything, making wild predictions about an individual's future performance. People have different personality styles that influence how they interact with others and approach tasks. One popular assessment tool used to understand these styles is the DISC personality assessment. The first style is dominance, represented by the letter D. People with a dominant style are decisive, goal-oriented and competitive. They are confident, outspoken, assertive and focused on achieving results. The second style is influence, represented by the letter I. Individuals with an influential style are sociable, outgoing and enthusiastic. They are skilled at persuading and influencing others. They tend to be optimistic, open, trusting and energetic. The third style is steadiness, represented by the letter S. Those with a steady style are patient, reliable and cooperative. They prefer a stable and harmonious work environment. They value cooperation, sincerity and dependability. They have calm and deliberate dispositions. The fourth style is conscientiousness, represented by the letter C. People with a conscientious style are analytical, detail-oriented and systematic. They value accuracy and precision in their work. They enjoy independence and are detail-oriented. The DISC personality assessment is typically administered through a questionnaire where individuals respond to statements or scenarios. Based on their responses, Individuals are assigned scores indicating their dominant and less dominant personality traits. These scores are then used to create a profile that describes the individual's preferred behavioral style in a graphical representation. While the DISC model is widely used in various organizational settings for recruitment and selection, leadership development and training, it's important to note that it has the critics and limitations. Let's dissect the very first question in the DISC assessment survey. Pick one of the four options that is most likely you and then pick one of the four options that is least like you. The options are people look up to me, I tend to be a kind person, I accept life as it comes. People say I have a strong personality. Now these are the four options. From the options, you need to pick one statement that best matches your personality and one option that worst matches your personality. But dear friends, these options are open to varied perceptions and interpretations and that's the whole problem. For instance, people look up to me. There's a decision that they have made influenced by their perceptions about me and their own feelings and values, which doesn't compare to what kind of a person I am. So I can't say if people look up to me because it's I have to say on their behalf. One of the option is I tend to be a kind person. Well, but where? At work, at home, at the gym, where? And how much? 20% of the time, 50% of the time or always. Another option is people say I have a strong personality. Well, how many people? What people? Is this at work? Is strong personality a good thing or is it a bad thing? If the goal is to assess someone consistently to scale, then your assessment input needs to be sanitized with absolutely no room for interpretation. These sort of questions allow an inconsistency in responses, which is not what you want when you are claiming that you can accurately gauge a person's personality type and future performance. How do you account for interpretation of skills? If you ask me on a scale of 1 to 10 how much I like Taylor Swift, how do you ensure that my response of 6 identically matches to another person's 6? How do you account for cultural or location-based 
interpretations. So here are three main reasons why disk assessment is not reliable. The first one is lack of scientific basis and subjectivity. The disk model lacks a solid theoretical foundation and empirical support. Unlike some other personality assessments, the disk model was not developed through rigorous scientific research and testing. The assessment heavily relies on self-reporting and self-assessment, which can be subjective. People may answer questions based on how they perceive themselves or how they want to be perceived rather than reflecting their true behaviors. Second, simplicity and overgeneralization. The DISC model simplifies personality into four categories, dominance, influence, steadiness, and consciousness. Critics argue that this oversimplification may not capture the complexity and nuances of human personality, leading to overgeneralization. Third, inconsistent results. Individuals might receive different results if they take DISC assessment in different times or in different contexts. This inconsistency can be problematic when using assessment for hiring or team building decisions. If used thoughtfully and in conjunction with other assessments and tools, the DISC model can provide insights into communication styles and interpersonal dynamics. But it should not be considered as a definitive measure of personality. So if you liked our video, do not forget to subscribe our channel. I'll see you again in the next video.